this is the series of sexual reproduction in flowering plants in this video we are going to discuss about female reproductive part and just sperms are flowering plant and its female reproductive part is called as carpal earlier in gymnosperm this was called as megasporophyll I mean this is formed by modification of the leaf but in angiosperm this is called as carpal now the structure of carpal we'll discuss in detail in this video so carpal is the female reproductive part in this video we'll discuss about carpal what is carpal and what are ovules present in the carpal what is the structure of the ovule and what are various parts of the ovules now if we uh, cut vertical section of the flower uh, we can see it has various floral whorls like sepals petals stamens which we have discussed in earlier videos and link will be shared in the description box but in this video we will only talk about its female re reproductive part that is this part now this is ovary this is style and this is stigma so this part is the female reproductive part this is also called as gynoecium now gynoecium part and this part this is also called as carpal if it has one carpal this is monocarpillary ovary and if it has two carpal this will be bicarpillary if it has three tricarpillary and if a uh, five pentacarpillary and if many this this is called as polycarpillary so depending upon carpals how many carpals they are present now uh, this part is ovary this is style and this is stigma now this part ovary now this has ovules and these ovules they are bound on cushion like structure called as placenta and this arrangement on the placenta is also called as placentation we'll see in the next slide now this part is the female reproductive part and this part is the male reproductive part this we have already discussed in the earlier video but here we will discuss this in detail now we can see here this is uh, this have been extracted from the flower actually this part is ovary this part is ovary this elongated part is style and this is the stigma we can see again enlarge it and see it right now this uh, gynoecium or carpal part this is present over here in the flower if you see this part is the carpal part this is the male part and this is the female part and these are petals and sepals will be present below here uh, other floral whorls of the flower so carpal or female reproductive part gynoecium is present in the center of the flower and this is the most important part and this bears the ovules which are actually uh, responsible for the multiplication of the species because ovule will ripen to form seed so in these uh, pictures we can see this is again carpal uh, this is the carpal of kaigelia pinnata now this part is ovary this is the style and this is the stigma so different shapes and different structures of gynoecium are present in different flowers and here we can see this is the flower of bohemia you can see here this part is ovary this is style and this is stigma so this in the center is present carpal or gynoecium now next we'll discuss about uh, presence of ovules in the ovary now this part is ovary as we discussed this is the style and this is the stigma right now if we cut its transfer section like this cut transfer section with the help of razor blade or microtome now that is called as this is called as ts of ovary mean transfer section of the ovary now if we cut transfer section of the ovary we will see that here there is present a cushion like structure this is called as placenta and these are the ovules born on the placenta and how these ovules they are arranged on the placenta this is called as placentation here we are taking the example of exile placentation 
but there are different kinds of placentation that we'll discuss in the next videos. Now, this is the actual permanent slide TS of ovary, transverse section of the ovary. This is again axile placentation, and we can see this part, this outermost is the ovary wall, and in the center is present placenta, and these are the ovules. We can see this, this is the ovule present over here, right? And here we can again see this is the ovary wall. And this kind of placentation is different. This is called as uh, marginal placentation. And this is the transfer section of the delphinium flower. And this white color ovules are visible over here. So basically, this is the ovule. If we see its structure, we'll uh, just study in the next slide in detail about the structure of the ovule. Now, various parts of the ovules we'll discuss now. Now we know this part, this is the ovule which was born on the placenta like this. This is the placenta and this is the ovule which is born over here, right? Now what is the structure of ovule? This we are going to discuss. Now this has different parts here, right? Uh, this is the ovule which is called as anatropos ovule. Anatropos is uh, when it is like this. We are seeing here. So, what are various parts of the ovules we are going to discuss? Now, we can see here. This is the stalk of the ovule. And this stalk is called as funicle or funiculus. By which it is attached here. Now, this is the, this part is the placenta part and stalk by stalk which is attached to the this stalk by which it is attached this is called as funicle or funiculus and here we can see it's here its stalk is this this is called as funicle right so this is the stalk part called as funicle i i hope it's clear to you what is funicle now this part of the ovule, the central part is called as nucellus. I'll again make here. This is nucellus, right? And this is a mass of parent gametous tissues like this, nucellus. So in the center is present nucellus. Now this is covered by coverings called as integuments. These coverings, they are called as integuments. Now integuments, like we can see here, there are Two layers of integument, this is one type of integument and this is second kind of integuments. At one point, integuments, they are not covering and this opening remains and this uncovered part or this opening is called as micropyle. This is called as micropyle. Again, I'll explain to you. Now, this is one integument I have made. This is second and this part, this is called as micropyle. Here it is not covered by the integuments. So this is the outer integument and this is the inner integument. Sometime maybe one kind of integument, two kind of integument depending upon the family and the species. Now this part is, again I'll discuss, this part is nucellus. Now this is covered by integuments. Now integuments end here, this part, right? And this part where integument and this is called as chalaza. So, this part is micropyle and this opposite part is called as chalaza. Now, there is another term which is called as raphi. Now, what is raphi actually? We can see in this ovule. Now, this is the stalk of the ovule and these are the integument. And here, this structure is produced. This is called as ridge-like structure and this is called as raphi. This may not be present in all the ovules. So, this is raphi. Raphi is the longitudinal ridge formed by lengthwise fusion of funiculus with the body of the ovule, like we have discussed. Now, in the center of the ovule, this part, this is called as embryo sac. This is embryo sac. Now, if we enlarge this embryo sac, now this has structure like this. We can see here. This is the embryo sac and here, this is the egg. This is the female part, female gamete, egg. And this has assisting cell or supporting cell called as uh, synergid. Again, uh, for 
structure of embryo sac we'll discuss in the next video in detail uh, what are different kind of embryo sac what is the structure of embryo sac but here we will discuss briefly this is the egg this these are the supporting cell called as synergids and this whole thing is called as egg apparatus this is called as egg apparatus now here in the center are present two polar nuclei now these two polar nuclei help in formation of endosperm after fertilization and these three cells they are called as antipodal cell a number of antipodal cell again it varies this we'll discuss in the next videos in detail so this whole part is called as embryo sac this is called as egg apparatus having egg and two supporting cell called as synergids these are two polar nuclei and these are antipodal cells so we can see here in this figure this is the micropyle this is the chalaza this is the embryo sac so egg apparatus is facing toward the micropyle and antipodal cells are facing toward the chalaza land right so these are various parts of the ovules and this is the anatropous ovule and this is the orthotropous ovule this we'll discuss in detail just in the next videos so we will discuss parts one by one so first we have discussed about its stalk this is called as funiculus so this is a stalk by which it is attached to the placenta hilum it is the point of attachment of the body of the ovule with the funiculus like this part here this part which is attaching to the body of the ovule this is called as hilum point where it is attaching to the body of the ovule this is called as hilum now next is raphe like we discussed ridge like structure formed and this central part this is called as nucellus which is made up of parenchymatous mass of tissue right now next is embryo sac this we have already discussed that this is the embryo sac which carries the egg apparatus antipodals and polar nuclei so funiculus is clear hilum raphe nucellus embryo sac now next terms are integuments this we have already discussed in detail so integuments these are the coverings present around the ovules and this this area is called as micropyle it's a narrow pore or passage formed by the projection of the integuments through which the pollen tube enters into the ovule and chalaza it is the place of the origin of the integuments or the basal swollen part of the nucellus like this part is the chalaza and this is the micropyle and pollen grains uh, which will be liberated right and they will fall and germinate over here forming a pollen tube they will carry the male gamete toward the female part helping in fertilization so these are the various parts of the ovules uh, we'll again repeat funiculus stalk hilum raphe nucellus embryo sac then integuments micropyle and chalas i hope uh, this this is all about structure of the view it's clear to you if you have any questions you can ask me in the comment box now we'll discuss in the next video about types of the ovules now there are different types of ovules orthotropous ovule anatropous ovule hemitropous ovule campylotropous ovule amphitropous ovule and sarcinotropous ovule so we'll discuss one by one first we'll discuss about orthotropous ovule now orthotropous ovule in this case we can see now this is the micropyle region and this is the chalaza region and they are in the straight line like this right and this is also hilum so hilum chalaza and micropyle they are in a straight line so an orthotropous ovule is erect no curvature is there this is straight hilum chalaza and micropyle they are this is micropyle this is chalaza this is hilum and they are in a straight line like this and here we can see embryo sac is also straight egg apparatus is facing toward the micropillar end example is polygon so how we can we can make this diagram we can make it like this this is the nucellus these are the integuments so this is the micropyle chalaza and hilum 
they are in a straight line so we can make the diagram like this so this is orthotropus of ovule and this is actually vertical section of the ovule next uh, we can see again here this is the orthotropus of you like we discussed earlier so this is orthotropus of you micropyle chalaza and hilum they are in a straight line and embryo sac is also straight now next we'll discuss about anatropus of you here we can see it's not like orthotropus of you we can see here this is the new cellus now this is covered by integuments like this and present like this this is inverted right so we can see here this is the micropyle this is the chalaza but the hilum is here this is hilum so micropyle and chalaza they are in a straight line but hilum is not in the straight line right so we can see here ovule is completely inverted uh, approximately 180 curvature of the funiculus Longitudinal axis of the nucellus is parallel to the funicular axis. Micropyle, now this is the micropyle and this is the hilum part where it is attaching. They come to lie near to each other. Embryo sac is straight facing the micropyle region. So micropyle and chalaza, they are in a straight line. But micropyle and hilum, they come lie near each other. And this is inverted type of a view at 180 degree. So this is called as anatropus ovule. Example is helianthus, sunflower. So this is about anatropus ovule. Now third kind of ovule is hemitropus ovule. Here we can see uh, this is the ovule and this is the stalk, right? And they are lying at right angle. Again, I'll make diagram over here just to make you explain. You can see here this is the stalk of the ovule. And this is the body of the ovule. So this is lying at right angle. Right. So this is called as hemitropus ovule. Hemitropus ovule. So we can see here. Now this part. This is micropyle part. This is the chalasa part. Micropyle and chalasa. They are in a straight line. And this is the hilum part. This is away from these parts. Right. So they are at right angle, embryo sac is straight, this is straight like this and these are two integuments. So uh, hemitropus ovule, body of the ovule is twisted only halfway so that degree of the curvature is intermediate between orthotropus and anatropus that is at right angle to the funiculus. Micropyle and chalaza, they are in a straight line. Embryo sac is straight, example is renunculus. So this is hemitropus ovule. Now next is campylotropus ovule. Here we can see uh, body of the ovule become curves, right? Ovule is curved, embryo sac is also curved like structure. Body of the ovule become curved so that the micropyle and chalaza come to lie either side of the funiculus. Micropyle is directed the base of the funiculus because of the curvature of the nucellus. Funiculus is attached near the middle of the body of the ovule. Raphi is not formed. Embryo sac is more or less straight. Example is caparis or mustard. And now we can see here. Now this part is nucellus. And these are the integuments. So body of the ovule is curved. And this is the embryo sac which is facing toward the micropillar end. And this is almost straight. Not much straight but this is almost straight. So this is the micropyle. This is the hilum part. right? And where integuments end? This is the chalazal part. So, the micropyle and chalaza, they come to lie near each other. Here it is the hilum part. It's not like earlier ovules. So, here body of the ovule is curved, right? So, this kind of ovule is called as campylotropus ovule. Now, next kind of ovule is amphitropus ovule. Here we can see body of the ovule is curved and even embryo sac is curved, right? So, we can make here like this. Now this is the we can if we see the ovule part is like this right and here embryo sac is also curved so this this is the stalk part so this amphitropus ovule we can see here this is the embryo sac which is curved this part is the micropyle this part is the hilum part and this is the chalazal part body is curved 
embryo is curved. So body of the ovule becomes horseshoe shaped, right? Embryo sac is also horseshoe shape. Funiculus stalk, it is this is the funiculus and this is the micropyle. They come to lie near each other, micropyle and hilum are also near to each other. This is micropyle, this is hilum and this is the chalaza. Three of them, they are very near to each other. Example is capsella, capsella, bursa, pastorus, also called as shepherd's furs. Its common name is shepherd's furs. Right. So this is horse shoe shape ovule called as amphitropus ovule. Now next is sarcinotropus ovule. Now this is usually found in opuntia or cacti, cactus. Here we can see now this is the ovule, right? This is the ovule, and this is circled by we can see integuments like this, right? So we'll make diagram like this. Now we can see here. Uh, I'll enlarge it and show you. Now this is the nucellus part, this is the embryo sac part, now this is integument, this is again integument, so this part is micropyle, this is chalaza, right? And we can see here, this is encircling like this, this funiculus or stalk is encircling like this, right? So micropyle, this is chalaza, right? So, ovule is straight with the micropyle facing toward the upper. Now, this embryo is x straight. This is facing toward the micropillar end. Uh, funiculus, this funiculus is elongated. This is elongated and this appears to be coiled. And this completely encircles the ovule like this. Right? So, this kind of ovule where funiculus is encircling it like this, this is called as sarcinotropus ovule. Uh, so, this is all about what is the structure of the view? What are different types of views? If you like my video, please like, share and subscribe. If you have any doubts, you can ask me in the comment box. Thank you for watching my video. Thank you.